Uh, okay, so uh, my name is Robin. Uh, I worked at Futurist as a full stack developer for a little over a year. Uh, before that, I come from DNA sequencing analysis kind of work, uh, which I did for a few years before that. Uh, and today, I'm going to give a talk on getting started with UI extensions. So I'm one of the people that has like learned something interesting, and now I'm sharing it here. Uh, and I'll talk about how to build them, uh, develop them, how to make them fit into the overall like, contentful editor, uh, integrate some third-party API, uh, configure them a little bit, and just in general, like show you that it's pretty simple to get started doing this. <laughs> nice. Uh, so just to kind of like affirm my assumptions, so I guess ha has everyone in here worked with contentful before? Okay, hopefully, uh, <laughs> except the designer in the back. Uh, <laughs> so, um, and then also uh, have, have, who in here has done some more advanced stuff, like maybe building UI extensions, etc. Okay, <laughs> cool, cool. Uh, <laughs> and I'm guessing we have a few front-end developers that might be aware of React and so on. Yeah, okay. So. What got me sort of interested in diving deeper into UI extensions and learning about them uh, was that we, were, we are currently working on, on, uh, with this client that is based in the US. Uh, they are kind of involved in the education market and roughly their idea is to connect uh, universities and students. So like recruiting students to universities and helping students find the universities that, that fit them best. And they do this by having an editorial team that sort of publishes a lot of articles about different topics, uh, and the back end then is, is contentful. So when they reached out to us, they talked a lot, uh, they had like a list of, of things that were bugging them from the, especially the editor's point of view, that were more familiar with like a more rigid like WordPress setup than a flexible contentful setup. And it was pretty clear when they came back to us and like, okay, well, we need help with maybe spell checking or a, or a more kind of like fixed editorial flow that UI extensions would fit right in there with like helping them bridge that gap. So from uh, kind of an overview tech, tech point of view, these uh, UI extensions replace parts of the editor experience uh, or extend it. And they do that by living inside of iframes that take, take up part of, of the editor Inside of those iframes, you have an HTML5 app, and you can build that however you want, just with JavaScript or with any like React, Vue, any other framework that you might want. Uh, if you do go with React, uh, Contentful has already prepared components uh, as part of a package called Forma 36 uh, that will make your sort of extension fit right into the editor without you doing the styling. Uh, when, what's more interesting is that you also get access to a UI extension SDK, which is kind of like a subset of, of the content management API, uh, which is already authenticated with the currently logged in user. So that sort of sets your scope of what you can do within the UI extension, which is pretty broad. Uh, you can also divide these UI extensions into three categories. Uh, the most basic one is the field UI extension. It basically replaces one of the fields that you have in your content model with whatever you want to put there. So you can imagine uh, kind of like enhancing one on a field with a, uh, an autocomplete from your third party or from your own APIs. Or you can maybe embed like a product catalog picker or something more like that. There's also the sidebar UI extensions. They live in the sidebar, have perhaps less to do with like managing the content itself, but you can imagine having a button that takes the current state of the entry and publish it, publishes it to, to a staging environment or something. And then there's the newest uh, type of UI extension, which is the entry UI extension. I haven't checked out that so much, but it's kind of the more ambitious, a more ambitious UI extension type that allows developers to completely customize the, the editor experience. But we're gonna stick with the field UI extension, uh, and what I'm gonna try to build 
here is this type of thing. So you can imagine having a content model that is basically an article or a blog post or something. Uh, so we have a title, we have some body, and we have a description text. Uh, and we wanna, what we want to do is have a category field, a uh, category UI extension that sort of like takes this, uh, when you click this suggest button, it takes the description, passes it to an API, and it will predict the category that that description explains. So that's what we're going to try to build. And for that, we're going to use an API called Dandelion. I just Googled it. I haven't really used it in production or anything, uh, but it had a pretty decent API, and it served the purpose for this demo. So it's basically a text analysis API. You can pass it to text string. It will do sentiment, sentiment analysis or like extracting data from, from uh, raw text. So uh, to get started, uh, Contentful has provided uh, a set of bootstrap scripts. Sorry if I'm standing in the way. Um, so and uh, what they do, if you've ever built like React applications, you have a set of scripts called create React app, and this works much the same way. So you run this, this uh, first line, and it will bootstrap a local development environment where you can develop your UI extensions. Uh, and what I've done here is I've run that command, uh, I've installed dependencies, installed additional dependencies so we can make HTTP, HTTP requests, um, and I've logged in and configured the, the kind of my environment. And basically what that does is it adds this file uh, where you store a content management token uh, and kind of like configure it to use the space that you want to use and the environment to deploy to. So then the scripts are able to like make changes to your content uh, or contentful environment. So now it's time for the demo. So uh, I have a content, uh, contentful space here, and here I have sort of the bootstrapped version of, uh, uh, of the code. So this is basically the files that you're given to start with. <coughs> you have this, uh, this file uh, that I showed before, uh, a set of other files that we're not going to uh, do much with, and then you have kind of a very simple, a very kind of basic React setup where you have an index file with the entry point for kind of like your iframe, some extra styling, and then a React component. So here is my root React component, and there's some uh, contentful specific things that I will get to, but uh, very basic like. A React thing. So uh, here, uh, to begin with, we have just a text input, which is imported from this Forma 36 library, uh, and then we have some additional styling. So that's what we're starting with, and we're also getting the SDK uh, passed to us as a prop. So we do that here when we set up the the component. So uh, what we're going to start with is to add some more Forma 36 components. So if you remember the picture that I showed, uh, we basically have an input and a button. So I import those, and then I use them down here. So a text input and a button, uh, which currently don't do anything. But let's install them by running npm start. So this will set up a local uh, server for us to do development with. It will bundle everything, uh, all the assets, and it will install the extension into Contentful. So the first thing that we want to do when we have the Contentful space is we go to Extensions, and here you can see that it's been installed. So we don't really need to do anything here, uh, but instead we go to the content model that we want to modify, in this case the blog post, and we go into the field that we want to replace with our custom UI extension. Under appearance, we will see the custom extensions. So we just save that and save the model. And then we go to the content. 
I'm going to pick one of the articles and here it doesn't show up at all. And this is because we are running a local server on HTTP, which is not secure, but Contentful runs on HTTPS. So we need to first allow, and I apparently can't use this. Uh, we need to tell Chrome that we need to trust this unsafe script. And then I will reload the tab and now our extension will show up like that. So uh, now at least we have it here. And if I get rid of this, uh, we can apply the next set of changes. So this is uh, <clears throat> where you kind of like have to understand how to interact with React and Contentful SDK. So what we start by doing is fetching the values that were already in, as part of the, the content model. Uh, and we do those through the SDK uh, and store them in the Re React state. But then we also have to remember that there might be multiple people editing the same entry at the same time. So what we can do is subscribe to changes to both the description field and the category field and sync those back to the React state. So this is what we do here. This code comes with the bootstrap, the, the bootstrap version of the UI extension. And then we just detach when we unmount the, the uh, component. So with that set up, it won't really change anything in the uh, in Contentful. So, <clears throat> no, before I do this. So if you have a look here at the component, it's sort of like squished together. So I want to add some spacing between them. For that, I'm writing just normal CSS. So I go to my styles. Styles, no. Uh, I go to my styles and I create uh, a new CSS class uh, and I add some bottom margin to my text field. Uh, and I use these special CSS variables that come with Contentful. And what I have to do in order to use these CSS variables is to import another uh, CSS file from Forma36 tokens, this, uh, uh, this package. And then I can use those uh, CSS variables. And then of course I add the, tech, the class name to, to the component and this will, uh, this will add this uh, spacing between the comp these two components. And if I reload so that you can calculate the iframe height, uh, it will also show up in a nicer way. But still nothing happens of course if I try to click this button because the, if the click handler doesn't do anything. So now we can, if I can get to my, uh, we can integrate with our API. And what we first want to do is this API requires an API token and I don't want to put the API token into my source code. So I can tell Contentful to add an installation parameter to my UI extension. And I do this in the extension JSON file, which is here, that defines kind of the name, the ID of your extension, etc. And I can decide to put uh, installation parameters and instance parameters. So instance parameters would be like for every field that you want to replace, you can have parameters for each of those. When installation is just globally for every space you install it into. So first I need to just reinstall it, the extension. And then when I go to my extensions and I click the extension, then I have to fill in this API token right here. So I'll click save, go to my content, uh, and then I'll just go over this quickly. So basically what happens when you click the button is that we tell our component that we're loading something from external API. We're getting this uh, API token from the SDK 
uh, we pick up the description text so we can pass it. Uh, and then we send a request to Dandelion. And if we get any predicted category back, we replace that in our React component, as well as updating our content, contentful SDK with that value as well. And if we don't get anything, then we just reset and remove the value from contentful. Uh, and then say that, okay, we're not loading anything anymore. So, uh, if I now click this suggest button, it will take the description, pass it to the library, to the API, and then fetch back the, the category that was predicted. So then if I write something else, like download, There is. You can see what that category predicts, and it's politics. Uh, so that was kind of a contrived example, maybe. But <clears throat> you can see kind of how you would be able to uh, call your own APIs and predict things, and uh, or maybe just have a, an API that suggests something, and you can still edit it if you want to. <clears throat> yes, so uh, that was it for kind of the, the demo part. So as a summary, uh, I really appreciate the developer experience that Contentful's UI extensions offers. You can still develop locally, uh, while at the same time inside of a real environment, like actually in Contentful in the, uh, in the editor, where you will see things later. Um, <clears throat> and also a note on the config values. So the config values are meant as configurations things. It's not a secret uh, stored vault or something. So if you store something very sensitive there, you have to be aware that those values are available in the iframe. So whoever has access to that iframe will also see those uh, installation parameters, like in clear text. Uh, and in this case, it's just a read access. Uh, so if someone steals it, we will hit the API limits and that's it. But if something is sensitive, then you shouldn't store it there. Uh, and then also the CSS variables. So if you want to use them, uh, remember to, in, uh, to import this, uh, this CSS line first. Uh, and that's it. I've published the code for this uh, uh, online and open sourced it, uh, which kind of like, uh, so we have this uh, chili corn fund that sponsors us as futurist developers to work on open source tools. Uh, either like this, uh, my own kind of like projects or other projects that you might want to uh, kind of like uh, help out with and so on. And then you can get some compensations for work that you do outside of company time. So that's it. I'll, I guess I'll publish this in the meetup group if you want to get access to the code and check it out. Yep. That's it. <laughs> Any questions? Okay. okay. Yeah. I think that concludes the meetup. Sort of. You're free to stick around and have an extra beer or finish the pizza. Yes. Yeah, and thank you for showing up. <laughs>